Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Chick Outdoors. Of course I'm Clayton Chick. This is the wonderful outdoors. Today's mission is strictly underwater footage. I'm not pulling out the graphs at all. I'm gonna have a pike tip up out over here, and then I'm gonna fish with the quad camera inside for pike and perch. Maybe some walleye cruise by too. I was setting up though, and I noticed I have one bad HDMI cable. So unfortunately right now I'm only running one recording unit on the underwater camera and I decided to be on the make that on the outside unit for now or in the outside line just because I probably have a better chance to smash a big pipe on a dead bait I'm thinking but if I can get that other one going we'll fire up the screen recorder too this camera's dying so let's get fishing um I just dropped this down here and I'm pretty sure a fish just picked it up. And it's not on the camera because it's just getting it all set up. <sighs> yeah, a fish just picked it up like instantly. Totally. Oh, he dropped it. No way. Right there. There it is. Am I recording? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, that fish just picked it up instantly I don't even know if I'm like anywhere near the camera yet or anything like that oh there's my bait okay there's my bait oh he's going right towards it too why won't you spin that is hilarious instantly instantly well that did not take long at all at all well i'm officially set up inside i think all the cameras are going like i said for now i got a gopro on here which is not obviously the best for footage but if i start to see a bunch of fish i will I'll move my screen recorder into here. I did see some walleye and perch, actually in that pike that I had right away too. I don't know if my head camera was recording or not, but basically I was dropping the bait down and getting the camera situated. And I was I'm like, geez, that bait's going right now. And yeah, a pike picked it up and I was able to swing the camera and kind of just catch the end of him or a little bit. And it, it was all shaky. So I don't know how good re the recording is in that sense, but yeah, it was uh. Definitely some fish around for sure. We got a flag. We got a flag. I'm going to just to bring the fish if I land them. Them ice shack and deal with them there. Doesn't look like anything's moving right now. I'm gonna check the camera first. Uh, bait's gone off the camera. I'm gonna do a media save here. Okay, I'm gonna record again just in case. Pull this out here. Check our drag, it's a little bit tight. Loosen it just a bit. Loosen it a bit more. Okay, he dropped it. We're just gonna go slow right now and see if there's some weight there. Dropping a new bait down here. At least I'll have some underwater footage of the fish eating. But we uh, are 0 for, 0 for 2 really now.
flag, 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 flag. I'm watching it move too. We got another flag. And this one's moving. Okay. What do we got here? This one's moving. I'm just gonna hit it right away. There we go. Okay, I uh, can't tell size. It's decent. It's definitely decent. I always say that right though. <laughs> you never know. Especially with pike. You could hit them when they're going the other direction. Like now it doesn't feel like it's got that much. And you know a 25 inch pike can uh, obviously feel pretty heavy coming in sideways too sometimes. But we're on the board anyway. As soon as I land this fish, I'm gonna go straight to the shack with it. Oh, oh yeah. And it's not tiny. It's not tiny. Like it's not a, it's not a little hammer handle. That's for sure. It's, oh, it's got, oh, there we go. It's got a pretty big head shake. I'm nervous. I like it. Something about big gators. I love my big walleye, but I love my transition over into into pike fishing though, for sure. Getting caught on the bottom of the hole. There's my leader. Okay. Oh, 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 oh baby. Oh, I love it. Love me some pike fishing. I'm gonna guess like a 35 inch or something like that. I'm getting caught on the bottom of the hole every once in a while. There we go. Oh yeah, just kind of what I figured, yeah? Oh, it's got some blue in it, that's crazy. Okay, I'm gonna go to the shack with it and we'll show it off in there. Hooks out, and I can't, I don't have my glasses on so I can't see how good it looks here. My glasses fog up as soon as I get to the warm shelter. That's about a, like I said, about a 35 inch or something like that, maybe 34-ish, 33, nice fish. It's quite a bit of ice already for this time of year. And there she goes. Hopefully it doesn't get snagged on my line here. And yeah, boom, we are one for three on, on pike now. Okay, we're set up again out there. I've got my pike tip up in about five feet of water. I like to run my, my pike tip ups generally shallow for the most part. Early, early season, I'll fish a little bit deeper for them on some like deeper transitions from that like I don't know, 15 to 25 feet. Then I'll run the pike bait up a little bit higher. Now I'm running it about this far off of the bottom. I feel like they're probably in here shallow, cruising obviously for other types of bait fish, perch. Perch usually hang tight to the bottom. Crayfish, they love to eat crayfish. Crayfish are right on the bottom. I, I said when I caught it out there, it had a little bit of blue inside its mouth. Not obviously sure what that's from. I've always I've always thought it's kind of from what they've been eating and stuff like that. And that could be a crayfish diet for that fish. But anyways, I I might drill another hole out there and run two pike tip ups and not even fish inside the shack. Just because so far I've seen one little walleye on here and that's kind of it. So and right now I'm in about 10 feet of water. And like I said, I got my pike tip up out in five feet. So I'm thinking possibly of popping another hole out there and then maybe even moving the shelter kind of a little bit closer and keeping it like of a little bit of a home base. It's cold enough outside where I don't want to mess with the fish too long. I am going to take pliers with me in the future now for some of the smaller fish that are I catch out there and I'm going to release them right at the hole. And if it's bigger, I'll bring it into the tent to measure it, show it off. That one was kind of like, I really would have normally just unhooked uh, it at the hole and let it go. but. Since I don't have a fish on the camera yet, I thought I'd better put one on the main camera quick and we'll go from there. Oh, there's some perch right there on the to upper upper screen there. Like I said, I only got the GoPro going, but a little perchy just swam by there. Anyways. Yeah. Fun little start. I love pike fishing. I love big fish. And I already caught a giant walleye this ice season. So now it's time for a giant pike.
Oh, flag, 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 flag. I was just coming out to get some more bait. And I saw it basically go up. We're on them. We're on them. Okay. Oh, it's coming right at me. Still on there though. Sometimes you gotta be careful when that pike gets hit right away. They'll do a 180, they'll turn around, they'll come right back at you. Doesn't feel very big. Doesn't feel very big. No, just a little guy. And I don't have pliers because I was coming outside. Easy, stay in the hole. Stay in the hole and I'll grab you. I don't have pliers, so it's coming outside to get more bait. So we'll go inside, unhook them, and uh, send them back in. Send them back. Easy. Okay, there we go. Easy. Oh, actually, you know what? Right here. I don't have to go inside. We're good. Okay, perfect. That'd be a good eater. I do want to do a demonstration how to clean a pike at some point. So we're going to keep one eventually. Okay, we've made a change. We now have two pike tip-ups out here. We're not running any lines in the camera. I got my HDMI cord to work. So we are set up with two uh, recordings right now on the Aquaview. So hopefully we can still smash a giant. I think it was just better to transition to pike right now. We're keeping the shelter up though, because it is colder. It's like minus 15 Celsius too cold for those fish for too long outside so that's my home base at some point i might move it in a little bit closer at the same same time it's not that far away it's right here we're good to go i'm happy with it i've got a release hole in there and all that fun stuff so a little bit of a transition it's good to adapt throughout the day right like even though i came here for perch and pike got a couple pike right away wasn't seeing any perch on the cameras like you know what Let's just go full out for pike right now and uh, see if we can put a big mama on the ice. Oh baby. Everybody always says, Clayton, run to your flags. Running is the wrong thing. I'm in five feet of water. Being quiet is the right thing. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. He is hammering out quick. Okay. I'll give him just a little bit and then we're gonna hit him. My theory always is you have only got one hook in there. The big fish is gonna have that whole bait in his mouth because of the size of the bait. And if it's a smaller fish, it might come off and that's okay. Got him. I think, like I said, if it's a smaller fish, he might not have that hook in his mouth and it might come out. Obviously a smaller fish could have it in its mouth too, but a bigger one is gonna have that whole bait in its mouth. And I'm not too worried about giving it too much time. I was sitting on my sled and I saw this one pop off, which was nice. Just a little guy. Just a little guy. Okay, easy buddy. Easy. I might have to take you in. Yeah, hooks right there in the top of the mouth. We'll take him in, get him unhooked and released. Okay, pike. Oh, easy. Pike three. And uh, yeah, easy game. Easy game. Oh, got my bait thawing out there. See ya. OK, 
Okay, again, no glasses because it's warm in the shelter. And yeah, it's another fish that I would have normally released at the hole, but I was sitting on my sled and I didn't have pliers with me, but I'll keep some pliers out there. Yeah. Nice thing too about running into the shelter right now with my rod is this where I have all my bait. I can get everything set up, reorganized. Sometimes it's good to have an extra rod, even maybe if you want to like thaw one out if stuff starts to freeze on you. I do like to use a rod and a reel for tip up fishing. I just get more enjoyment out of it. And I'll go through the uh, the tip ups that I'm using too. I've been, at, I've been getting a lot of questions about what the new tip ups are I'm using and my setup and all that. But I've got one more bait here. This is what I'm using is called a large Cisco. That's what I'm uh, using right there. And all I'm doing is putting just wound trouble right in the top. And I talked about if the if the fish is big enough, he's gonna have that whole bait in his mouth right away. So I hit him really early. If he's small enough or he's too small, he just has the bait here and I don't get the hook, doesn't matter. But I've been using a single treble for a long time. And I find if you hit him right away, you almost never have any issues with uh, a fish being hooked poorly. One single treble, I do like to run a barbless hook. I'll go through this whole setup here, what I got going on here in a little a little bit, but let's get this one back out. And uh, yeah, that was nice just sitting on the sled and pop, gotta see it happen. Like I said, there's like so many comments. Clayton, why don't you run to your tip up? I hate how you walk. Well, you know what? Shallow water, you don't wanna spook them at all. You don't want to spook them. So I poke some poke some holes in the bottom of it for the air bladder. And then when I'm in the shack too here, I'm just going to pop them all and then make sure it's going to sink. And then I can go out there and I'm nice and warm and fresh. My hands are a little bit wet yet, so I'll dry those off. Go out and get everything set up. Having your little home base like this is definitely worth the time to set it up have you know have a warm lunch all that stuff even if you're tip up fishing i recommend having a nice little warm warm home base so this is the tip up that i'm running called the finicky fooler i brought an extra one with me so i can show it off this is what it's like when it's set up i'm going to show you how quick it is to put it down as well but this is simple take your rod put it into here in the little rod holder that you have you set your desired depth you take your line you set it underneath this little spring mechanism here just like that you take your flag you put it on this outside edge i'll see if i can show them the camera on the outside edge there like that and then when the fish comes and pulls it lifts the line and boom nothing to it no need to have anything else on your line in terms of bobber stoppers clips anything like that it's super basic there's a lot of instructions on the finicky fleur website how to use them i have some of these and i have the hook setter version i've mostly been using just the original and then the why i like them the best is because they're so easy to pack up you can carry a bunch of them around with you and not take up a, a ton of space this little mechanism here clips in there flag comes out goes into this little slot right here rod holder comes out slides in there bang done nothing to it super simple obviously if you want to get even more compact you could like take your flag off store your flag somewhere else boom there you go you can even take this spin it around right there compact it even more compact right that's like the biggest thing i enjoy fighting pike on a rod and a reel i get a kick out of it instead of just hand lining them all the time i enjoy this i haven't used it much for walleye yet but it works it would work really well because the mechanism sets up pretty pretty you can set it up where it's easy to come off or it takes a little bit more pressure to come off right depending on where you're going to put it on this little on this little uh, steel part here so it'll work for that burbot walleye pike yeah finicky fooler so the other section that I have here right now today, I'm running actually just this disc right here. It comes together right here when you order this foam disc set up. You can put this little piece over your hole and then you can put this on top. Or you can just take this and just slide it right on top of your hole as well, which is what I'm doing today. This is, I forget the name of it, but uh, you can find them on the Finicky Fooler website. 
Pokey's Tackle Shop in Regina has some in stock. Stillwater in Verdon, Manitoba has some in stock. Yeah, those are the two places I know in Canada you can get it. Other than that, in the Finicky Floor, you order right from the website. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I've been using this tip up now for not quite a, a full year. I asked them to send me some last year because I wanted to see what they're like. And I used them when, during the game of inches and the simplicity of them was so nice. I'm, I'm liking them a lot so far. Oh, and I got a flag right as I'm doing my demonstration. Just finished my demonstration. And I look and there's a flag up. This hole's been hot. That hole, not as much. Oh, he's running. That's good. He's running. I like that. I'm basically just going to turn and hit him right away. Those foam discs are so nice. Okay, here we go. Can't tell size yet. And so far I'm seeing small. So far I'm seeing a little guy. He feels tiny. Maybe it's one of those 29 inch walleyes like we caught in Game of Inches. You know, that'd be nice. <laughs> uh, I'll take a giant pike. I'll take a 30 inch walleye. Heck, I'll even take a 17 inch perch. It's definitely a little guy though, for sure. He'd be a good eater. And, uh, maybe a little bit too small to even eat. No, no, go in the hole, go, go in the hole. I don't like to force him out all the way i like to kind of let them sit in the hole let them slow down grab them right there i run barbless hooks so it should really pop it out quite easily again i did a really poor job of not bringing my pliers with me easy peasy lemon squeezy okay i was able to pop them out i got that gopro going i hope and yeah see ya now i gotta run back in get some more bait get set up again this hole has been hot okay record or off there's another fish down there and record look at that it's a little guy but I just got this set up and there's another fish coming there am I gonna watch this happen here make sure I'm recording here too oh well, it wasn't okay good look good, good oh probably recording there though just got everything set up and there's a, another little guy here uh, he's coming towards the camera no he's coming towards the bait look at this i just got this set up like just and off wow okay and I, I saw he had the hook in his mouth so i'm just gonna hit him like right away you don't need to like absolutely crush him those hooks are sharp right like you just gotta put some put some tension into him more than anything oh my head camera's dying I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, probably battery, but I still got this one going, I think. Okay, he's not very big. I saw him under the underwater camera. I saw him eat it. Just got set up, like just. Guess I'll be going in for more bait. Guess I'm going in for some more bait. Okay, easy. You can see, look, he's been hooked before, right there in the bottom. Okay, we'll get you out. Okay, out and back in. Okay, well, that happened really, really quick. So now we gotta go get another piece of bait again. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, oh, my hands are cold. It's definitely, like, if you can't be quick with these fish in and out, like, I would not even wanna do photos outside. Like, right now, I, it's like minimal, quick as you can. And then if it's bigger, I'm going to the shack with them for sure. Well, it hasn't been smoking barrels. The last two hours has been pretty slow. Pretty slow. I went by the one camera though and I saw some walleye cruising by. Now I'm like, why am I not fishing for walleyes? But that's all good. It's all good. I'll run a small interlude of all the fish that have been on the, on the camera that haven't set off any flags. And uh, we'll see if we can maybe catch another pike yet before the night's over. That camera over there is starting to, to get really dark just because while well, the sun set about 10, 15 minutes ago, I don't have much time left. Roll the interlude.
So this camera is now dark. It's been two hours since I've moved that foam mat, since I've done anything here. We're gonna do a test. This is what, right now, what, how much is froze. I should break this off once in a while, but I'm not too worried about it. Anyway, okay, it's been two hours. Let's see what we got here. Because, uh, well, it is cold out today. Okay, so we got a little bit of ice, but not much. It would easily, like, the fish would have easily went in there for sure. And I could seal this even more with that other foam plate I have. You could set up a nice thing there if it was colder and put that in there and you'd be good. But that was, that was two hours and that was like nothing. So that, a fish would not have had a problem pulling that by any means. So foam discs are pretty handy. And this is a 10 inch hole. Oh, flag. Just joking. <laughs> That's totally a walleye. Look at that. <laughs> I knew there was a walleye swimming around with my Cisco. I got here just before he set it off, obviously, because I watched him swim in circles with it. <laughs> oh, my friend. That's a... That's a fun way to end it off. I guess I'm going to give you that meal too. That was cute. Okay. You'd be almost a good eater, but we're going to let you go. You deserve it. That's funny. Well, that was a fun little way to wrap up the evening. A little walleye. I went to the camera and I was going to pull everything out. And I noticed him swimming in circles with a bait in his mouth. And either he was too small and he couldn't set it off at the tension I had it set at, or I just kind of got there at the right time or before the flag went. But that will wrap up this video. Not smoking barrels, that's for sure. But can't always be smoking barrels. I do have some days where I go out and don't ice a big pike, but I'm gonna have a couple days here to edit some videos before I go on another adventure. I do have one more day to fish tomorrow. I haven't been out much in the last two weeks, so that's why there's been a lack of videos or there was no videos between Christmas, New Year's type of thing, but we're going to push hard now for January, February, probably March, and we're gonna pump out the ice fishing content like crazy. So thank you so much for watching, and don't forget, get outside.